Welcome to Statics. Creating free body diagrams. Free body diagram. That is a term that you will be hearing a lot going forward. Not just in this class, but in future mechanics classes that you may take. A free body diagram is a simple sketch of the particle or member on which you are analyzing forces. The diagram includes the forces that are on the particle drawn as vectors, with direction and magnitude clarified. For example, here is a real system that includes a member, which has mass, and therefore weight, and cables that are supporting it at known orientations theta and phi. I can draw a free body diagram where I represent the member as a particle. I show the forces acting on it in the directions they are actually acting. Now you don't have to be an artist when drawing a free body diagram. A reasonable stick figure is typically sufficient. However, you must be accurate in your diagram. Engineers are accurate, so if you want to be one, work on that. When creating a free body diagram, the first thing we do is identify the object on which we are analyzing forces and draw it as an isolated particle or member. By isolating it, I mean that you draw a complete mental circle around it and consider every force or cable or spring or whatever intersects that circle and acts on the particle. After drawing the point, we draw lines or arrows to represent all the forces that act on that particle. And we really have two different types. Active forces, such as a force drawn in with a magnitude on it, for example the particle's weight, and reactive forces, like the balancing forces in the cables in our example. Note that we don't draw the cables. We represent these in our free body diagrams as forces. Once we have those forces identified, we're going to label them. I may label a force as FAB or FAC. Sometimes, if we are working with a cable or rope, we label the corresponding force as TAB or TAC. The T stands for tension, because the force in a cable or rope will be a tension force. Sometimes, forces will just be labeled as A or B. All of these are fine, just know that you will see forces represented in all these different ways. Also, it's important to indicate all directions, dimensions, and magnitudes. You want your work to be a standalone product. In other words, you or someone reviewing your work should be able to find all the information needed to solve the problem in your work, written on the page. There should be no need to go back to the textbook to understand what is going on, or what the given and find information is. The final point is one that cannot be emphasized enough. It is to pay attention to signs, positive and negative, on your numbers. It's very important that you state or assume a direction on any of the forces that you draw. Drawing an arrow coming out away from the particles represents a force pulling on the particle, like a cable in tension. An arrow drawn towards the particle represents a pushing force. Generally, unless we know otherwise, we draw the forces pulling on the particle. Then when solving the problem, a negative sign on your answer simply means that the actual force was in the opposite direction than that shown in the free body diagram. So if I draw a force coming away from the particle in my free body diagram, and my calculations show the force direction is negative, that means the actual direction is opposite the way I drew it, and is actually pointing towards the particle. This will make more sense as we start working through examples. Here's a simple free body diagram. The particle is at the origin of the x and y axes. Sometimes I will take the time to draw in the x and y axes, and other times they may not be needed. In this problem, I will draw on the axes because the angle of one of the forces, F, is measured from the x-axis. You can see a downward force from the origin of 3 kilonewtons, and in the second quadrant, a force of 7 kilonewtons that follows a similar triangle of 3, 4, 5 proportions. Those are all the pieces of information I would need to solve this problem. I can see that I only have two unknown pieces of information, the magnitude of F and its angle from the x-axis. We will see that with two unknowns in a single free body diagram, we should be able to solve for them. 